In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came out to praise the name of Jesus. So let's clap our hands. This is a song that we all know. Hallelujah. your name your holy name I praise your name your holy name I praise your name not just today but always now and forever Lord I praise your name I praise your name your holy name I praise your name your holy name I praise your name not just today but always your name yes God will praise your name your holy name we'll praise your name your holy name we'll praise your name not just today but always now and forever Lord I praise your name for I praise your name your holy name I praise your name your holy name I praise your name not just today, but always, now and forever. Lord, I praise your name. Oh, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, Lord, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, yes, the blessings come down. The praises go up, the blessings come down. I praise your name. Your holy name, I praise your name. Your holy name, I praise your name. Not just today, but always, now and forever. Lord, I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. Your holy name, I praise your name. Not just today, but always. Now and forever, Lord, I praise your name. Because when the praise go up, Lord, the blessings come down. When we give him the glory, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praise go up, the blessings come down. When the praise go up, the blessings come down. The praise go up. The blessings come down when the praises go up. Miracles begin to happen when the praises go up. Healing begins to come forth when the praises go up. The praises go up. When the praises go up, the praises go up. We begin to get our strength. We begin to get our healing. We begin to get our breakthrough when we focus on the Lord. for you oh God's got a blessing for you I came to encourage God's got a blessing for you I don't know who needs a blessing but God's got a blessing for you oh for you can't have it just reach up and grab it you can't have it just reach up and grab it yes you can't have it just reach up and grab it you can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You 
you can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You can't have it, just reach up and grab it. You can't have it, just reach up and grab it. I'll praise your name, your holy name. I praise your name, your holy name. I praise your name, not just today, but always, now and forever. Lord, I praise your name. I praise your name, your holy name. I praise your name, your holy name. I praise your name, not just today. today, but always, now and forever, Lord, I praise your name, oh, not just today, but always, now and forever, Lord, I praise your name, hallelujah, we bless your name, Jesus, hallelujah, we will praise you, Lord God, we will worship you, Lord God, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. So receive our praise, oh God. Receive our praise, oh King. And sanctify.
thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up. And my heart filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted, with my hands lifted up. And my mouth, and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Can we prepare our hearts today with, with our mouth lifted up? And my mouth, my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, O God, just to walk into your house. Father, we thank you. We can't thank you enough, Father. So we'll just bless your name and tell you how wonderful you are. We ask you, oh God, to have your way in this Bible study. And as we just walk through your word, Father, we desire to know more about you. And it's our desire, Father, that you would reveal yourself to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. God is so good, y'all. He is so good. We're going to get into this word. I'm going to talk about unity today. Unity. And um, unity is something that uh, we often just talk about. And we go into the scriptures and we, you know, unity, unity. I think it's one of those words that we kind of just throw around. But I really just want to take a moment to... um, Unpack unity, but along with some other things, just in the word. Um, and you know, and before we actually just dive into, it, we're going to go into Ephesians. We're going to spend a good portion of this uh, lessons just in Ephesians, kind of walking through a little bit. Ephesians is um, it's a little much. Ephesians is 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 so much packed into those six chapters in Ephesians. You know, there's there's really no way you could really get through it. I feel like in a few months, it's something that you really just spend time with unpacking uh, uh, verse by verse by verse, and there's so much in each verse. But when you talk about unity, uh, I want us to first think about what uh, uni is. Just before we get to unity, just uni, uniform, uni, it's just one, right? So uh, we always talk about being united, one, we talk about being unified. One, uh, uniform, <laughs> uni, togetherness. Um, union, marriage, uni again, right? These two shall become one flesh. So uh, in, essentially that is what Christ wants for us, for us to become one with him. Uh, and so uh, the apostle Paul as he's writing um, Ephesians, I, you know, I really, really like it because even the way he addresses the church is very interesting to me. The first thing he does is, you know, he says, I, Apostle Paul, uh, uh, Paul, Paul the Apostle, rather. I said, man. Or I, Paul, a prisoner. Well, he's in prison as he's writing. <laughs> So uh, when we start to unpack some of these scriptures, we don't want to just breeze over these things. These are things we want to actually pay attention to. And when we look at the life of Paul and uh, Saul and we see his conversion, that in itself is something to just really unpack in itself. You know. So when he talks about, uh, it almost gives him credibility <laughs> when you understand what, what he's been through in his life. So... Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, John 15, John 15 and 16. I'm just going to park there for a minute. Um, Because even as I was talking about the the life of the Apostle Paul, 
This is the same one who executed Stephen in Acts chapter 7. You know, we, all, we often talk about him, him you know, the, the, uh, the theologian or the author, if you will, of the New Testament. But there's some things in his background that's just, man, <laughs> you know? Um, but more importantly, like I just said, I think it speaks to the, the, the credibility of his transformation. So I want us to look at John 15, chapter 6. It says, uh, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I think that's the first thing we have to understand, that it, none of this is of our own doing. We didn't choose ourselves. God called you, right? Everything that you're going through right now, he called you. So the scripture says, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Amen. So our fruit should abide. Here's the thing. Once you have the infilling of God's spirit, of the Holy Ghost, we should then see that displayed. Amen. We should see those things displayed. And that's what he's saying. Listen, you didn't choose me. I chose you. So once I've called you out in two, that should, I should see some, some sort of change. And a lot of times we're talking about the change on the, the outward, but not really dealing with the change on the inward. Right? So, so when, he, when he chooses you, he's not choosing you just uh, for you to come in, you know, Y'all know how we do. <laughs> Dress the part. But he wants to have that, that full circumcision on the, on the inside. And, and from doing that, now we start to then bear fruit. So uh, I'm, I'm going to leave John there, and we're going to jump over to Ephesians, the second chapter, uh, 1 through 4. And the, the thing you have to understand, even when you're reading Ephesians, what Paul does is he has... Uh, Three solid chapters where he's just talking about nothing but doctrine. I mean, three, I mean, he's hammering one after another. (laughs) And uh, that's what we're going to just kind of pick a little piece out of it here. And um, in the second uh, second chapter. And he says, and you were dead in the trespasses and sin. You were dead in the trespasses and sin. And we go on, it says, in which you once walked. <laughs> Amen? In which you once walked. So what he's saying there, uh, when you look at the context of walked here, uh, it, 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 I think sometimes when we look at walk, we think in terms of you know, walking from that sense. But what he's really talking about is your ways, your lifestyle, the the. And I mean, you know, some of us may know this, but I want to be very plain, just kind of take it down to its base. The walk is not necessarily, you know, who I'm hanging out with, but it's more so like what's on the inside and what does your life look like? And how does this walk, how does this this walk with Christ look? So uh, following the course of the world, this is the same thing we see in Romans chapter 12. It's the exact same thing. So now he's talking to a church over uh, at Ephesus and he's saying, you follow the course of the world. Following the prince of the powers of the air. I mean, when we really see it in the scriptures here, what we see is he's saying, listen, Christ is here. And y'all was over there <laughs> just doing whatever you wanted to do. He, 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 he died. He came so that you might have salvation, so that you might have true life. But you all was walking. It says here, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. And we go on, third verse, among whom we all once lived, once lived in the passions of our flesh. We just talked about that. Carrying out the desires of the body and the, and the mind. So there's some things that we are then carrying out, right? Because what are our, what are our desires? Right? And, and, and that's the same thing I was talking about. When he chooses you, there's some things that you then have to walk away from. In the last few weeks, we've been talking about what? Choices. And I, it's, it's, very, it's, it's quite simple when you really think about it. I think a, a lot of times we make it uh, uh, complicated. 
you know, I'm, you know, I'm in computers and whatnot. And when you really get into it, sometimes it's just it's one or zeros, yes or no. It's a green light, red light. You know, <laughs> which one are you going to choose? And at the end of the day, you have to then make a decision for yourself whom ye will serve, right? And then Paul, we actually see this. I'm jumping a little ahead of myself. He's constantly talking about this. He's saying, you, you are predestined. In those first three chapters, he's talking about uh, um, uh, predestined. You're, you're chosen. You're called out. These are things that he's hitting on. And what we see is, um, the, go to the fourth verse for me. But God. So he said everything else, it, it, verses 1 through and 2 and 3, and then he comes in and says, but God, being rich in mercy. Mercy is anew every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He's faithful. So, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us. And, and, and that is kind of something that I think we really need to, as this people of God, especially in your studying and your meditating, that right there alone in Ephesians is something you can just sit there and meditate on. It's, it's, it's so much packed into those four verses, telling you where you were. Verses one, two, three, and four. And then verse four, he comes in and says, but God being rich in mercy. In other words, you don't deserve this. You, you really don't deserve this. You were, you were following after the world. Your mind wasn't transformed. I called you out. I'm calling your name, and you're still not moving. <laughs> but God, being rich in mercy because he loved you, <laughs> still give you another chance. So uh, what we see here is as we move on uh, through those doctrinal truths in 1, 2, and 3, in the fourth chapter is where he comes in and he really starts to deal with the application. And that's kind of what I'm getting at uh, this evening. He's dealing with the application on the, on the latter uh, part. So uh, we're going to start at uh, verse uh, 17. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. See, then you got to understand when Paul is writing, He's addressing to everyone, and he does it so masterfully when you think about it because he's writing to the Jews and Gentiles. He's saying, listen, you know, and let me just say this too. We have to also understand that as he's writing, he's understanding that we're all different. Everybody is different. You from this side. You, you from over east. You from over west. You, you, you grow up here. You grew up over there. You like this and you're like that, but he came for everybody. <laughs> not, just, not just this group here. <laughs> not just this group over here. He came for everyone. And I think we have to understand that even when you're approaching the scriptures, because I think sometimes we're so, I'm not going to say we as, but I'm just talking about the general people as a whole. Because even I too was once like that. That when we approach it, we're so narrow minded and saying, okay, he's writing to believe. Well, he's writing, saying this is for everyone. So sometimes even when we approach the scriptures, uh, the first thing we need to do is then pray. Because <laughs> a lot of times, we're, we're, and this wasn't even in my notes, but a lot of times when we go to approach the scriptures, we're just opening, but we're not praying. So even in your studying, studying, you make sure you approach the scriptures with praying, but then also understanding the intent of the writer. Because when Paul is writing, you have to understand what he's really saying and why he's saying it. <laughs> so, uh, I went left. I wasn't supposed to go there, but that was for somebody. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, no longer walk as the Gentiles do, but in the futility of the mind. And the mind is just something that you really can't explain. The mind is something that you can really not explain. And, and people of God, hear me clearly. Uh, that's why I feel like so many times that we are attacked. The enemy just wants to get here. He wants to get here. He wants to get here. And th but there has to be a transforming of the mind. And th that's really the base of this, this entire walk. <laughs> like I talked about before. 
one or zero, red, green, a choice. But you've got to get a hold of this thing here. Now, come back here. You ain't going over there. That's, that's really what it comes to. So verse 18, they are darkened in their understanding. See, that when you talk about understanding, it's still here. You haven't really come into the knowing. Now, remember, we're in chapter 4 here, but chapters 1, 2, and 3, he was dealing with those doctrinal truths. Right? We just talked about it, what he was talking about in, in, in chapter 2. So when we get here, he's saying, listen, you got to understand why Jesus came. You have to understand uh, who, who is it he came for. You have to open up your understanding and know who, he, who you are in Christ. Are you following me? You have to understand who you are. So he's saying that they were darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. So some of this is really because we are not open to then learning more about Christ. And the thing about it is, I, I was talking with someone once, and they said, uh, they said, well, I don't understand how you can go through the same text and get a new revelation. I don't understand how you can go to, to the Word and then understand more and more and more because you've already read the, the text. <laughs> I said, that's actually a good question. And the Spirit spoke to me, and uh, I'd never seen like this before. It says the Word is almost like the ocean. You, you, you'll never get to the bottom of it. <laughs> you'll, you'll never get to the bottom. Just when you think you, you've gone too far, there's another level there <laughs> that you cannot get to. And a lot of us are sitting on the surface. <laughs> we're, we're sitting in the boat, but we haven't gotten below. But even the submarine can only go but so far. God's word is powerful. <laughs> And that's where we have to really, that's why I, I told you just a minute ago, when we pray when we approach the scriptures, because then he starts to even reveal more and more to you. Are you following me? Because there's only some things you can see if he pulls the scales off your eyes. If he doesn't pull it, you won't see it. <laughs> and that's why many of us are saying, well, hey, I'm going, I'm studying the word, I'm, I'm reading the scriptures, I understand uh, what he means in Ephesians 2, I understand what he means uh, but, I, but I still don't have an understanding. I, I hear what the preacher's saying, but I still don't understand. Of course, how can they hear without a preacher and teach? I understand those things. But then there's some studying that we have to do on our own and some seeking him that we have to do on our own. And that's what we see here, right? They're darkening the understanding because uh, the ignorance due to the hardness of the heart. So now, now we have to deal with desire, because now, what are we des desiring? Right? There, there's a lot of things that we're desiring, but have we put away, like, like we're talking about in Romans, those uh, the walking away from the world, if you will, and walking away from those things that are not pleasing to God. So it, it really goes back to ignorance, the not knowing. <laughs> Because when you know who you are in Christ, then you almost say, hey, I don't, <laughs> I don't have time for that <laughs> because I know who I am. It's the same thing we were talking about Sunday about saying I'm victorious. It really lines up when you go back and look at the scriptures, even here in Ephesians. And Paul's writing to the Gentiles and, and the Jews. So um, 19... They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greed, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Every kind, just doing anything. <laughs> Everything goes. Your, your walk is over here on Monday and over here on Saturday. Because there's an ignorance there. And when I, when I say ignorance, I mean there's just an a, a unknowing. And uh, I, I really want to slow this down. We may not even get through all of it, but 
what we have to understand is that even as we come into the house, we can never come just as a, you know, I'm just going. You should be coming saying, okay, Lord, what do you have? What, what, got my Bible open. What, what do you have for me today? Because that's, that's the knowing, right? So you, get, you, you, you walk away from the ignorance. You walk away from the unknowing into the knowing when you desire more of him. Amen. But the problem is, in order to do that, and, and we, we come in and we say it and we say, you know, you got to push and you got to do this and that. Those things are true. But the reason it is because you're fighting against the, the, the fleshy desires. You're fighting against the, the, the princes of the air. The enemy wants to stop you. He, wants to, he, he doesn't want you to come into the knowing of who you are and whose you are. In fact, in, in, in the sixth chapter, he even says, look, be strong, because it's going to be hard. It ain't going to be easy. Be strong. And in, his, in the power of his might. That's what he says in, in the sixth chapter. So in other words, and, and to me, when you, really, when you sum up all of, of Ephesians in itself, th- those two words, listen, be strong. Because without the power of God, you can't make it. You literally can not make it. But then some of us feel as though, and when I say some of us feel as though, we'll say it, but through our actions, it's something different. And that's what Paul is talking about, make sure that walk is right, because we don't want to talk about it and not be about it. We don't want to talk about it and not be about it. So, uh, giving up to, to every period, and I kind of want to hang over there for a, uh, a little bit because we, there's there. A lot of times we, and when I say we, y'all, because somebody comes says, "Stop saying we," because I'm not included in that. Listen, <laughs> if it ain't, it don't apply to you. Then take to the side. <laughs> but when I say we, I, I'm oftentimes talking about the body of Christ. That's, that's, that's what I mean when I, say, when I say we. I'm talking about the body of Christ because uh, even one of the, the other mom, um, things here in Ephesians where he's talking about unity, we're one. We're one. So if, if you here and I'm there and we're not on the same page, then there's a disconnect there. <laughs> right? Because we're one body. You try, you try to do some things with one arm. You try to do some things with one leg. Some things you may be able to, but it's harder. Amen. It is absolutely harder. Uh, and I'm going to get to this um, 19 verse in just a minute, but I also want to say this. When we talk about being unified, being uh, unified in our thinking, um, in, in our ways, kind of jump a little ahead of myself here, but Paul even talks about one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So he's dealing with the one. Are you following me? Then he's dealing with how we see it. He's dealing with uh, uh, walking upright, if you will. But I got to thinking the other day about, uh, um, uh, again, I'm no science guy, but atoms, that as they join, they become stronger. That, that as... The more you have, the, the stronger they get. Now, don't ask me beyond that because I ain't no scientist, but I know that much. <laughs> but the Spirit started to help me to see this. That's how the body of the church is. That's how, that's how the church is in the body of Christ. That when we get it and come out of the ignorance and coming to the knowing, one by one, the body of Christ becomes stronger. We become stronger. And that is really what it's about. But even once you come in, the enemy's job is to tear it down and divide. So, uh, but, the, but the issue here in, in the 19th uh, verse that I see here, there's no shame. And what I mean by that, he says every kind of impurity. I don't want to touch on that for a minute because a lot of times people are saying, look, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what I want to do. So What? <laughs> No, absolutely not. 
I, I would really urge everyone to really read uh, just the six chapters. It's only 155 verses. It's a 20, 30-minute read. Because when you really understand who Christ is, we talked about in Sunday Monday School yesterday that uh, you will certainly burn if, 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 listen, hell is a real place. <laughs> it is real. Why? Because God's word is true and it says it. <laughs> and some people, that I, I said it once before, they're living in kind of way because they've never experienced hell. You've never had to burn. And one thing I always ask folks, even before we really start to really talk about the word, the first question I always ask is, do you believe God's word? <laughs> The answer is no, we got to go this way and deal with this. <laughs> but nine times out of ten, they're going to say, yes, God's word is true. So if you believe God's word is true, then everything that his word says, even if it hasn't happened, will come to pass. So hell is a real place. But because we've never experienced some things, we don't live our lives accordingly. And that's just what it is. Uh, just yesterday, we were out, a few days ago, we were out with my son. And uh, I've tried to always keep them in safe environments. But he's getting a little older, and, you know, things move. And he has a, they had a fire pit, you know. And I saw something in him. It was the curiosity. And I said, you've never been burned before. But if you come any closer, you'll never forget it. <laughs> And he ran the other way. <laughs> but it was because he, he felt the heat from the fire. Are you following what I'm saying? And, the, and, and that's really, uh, it's never God's intention for us to really get into some of the stuff that we get into. We get into ourselves. <laughs> it, it is never really his intentions for us to experience some of the things that we experience. But because of ignorance because of the unknowing, because we're not opening God's word and saying, God, what does your word say? And abiding by it. That's the other part of it, because we can know what it says and abiding by it. Then you say, well, Lord, how did I get here? <laughs> Are you following me? So, so I don't know who this is for, but you got to kind of kill that, you know, I'm just do what I want to do, and I'll accept the consequences later, because trust me, you don't want them. <laughs> You don't want them. Turn with me to uh, uh, Romans 1.18. Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who, by their unrighteousness, suppress the truth. We see it right there in the scripture. The reason is the unrighteousness that suppress the truth. So in other words, God is speaking... He's saying, uh-uh, that ain't it. Don't do that. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> turn around. Make a U-turn. Rich in mercy, too. So we'll hang on to that rich in mercy. But, but the 18th verse said, the raft of God. And uh, take me back just a minute to the 18th. Uh, Unrighteousness suppresses the truth. So you can get so far into some of this stuff, and then we're starting to wonder why, Lord, why do I have to pray? Then you, you, you're trying to come back out of it because you hear it and you know it. But that dark room, if you will, there's no light. That's why you come back to God's word. You ever dealing with something and you continue to read God's word, read God's word, read God's word, read God's word, you feel a little lighter. Certain things don't bother you anymore. That's what he's saying right here. It's, it's the truth that then pushes that unrighteousness away. But if I don't get more of God's truth, you see, and it's one thing, thank you, Holy Ghost, it's one thing to then hear it because sometimes we're hearing from what we've heard. And I'm going to just throw this out there, and then you're studying, you'll find it. A lot of stuff that you're quoting, you're misquoting <laughs> because somebody told you you didn't go see it for yourself. Are you following me? Someone called me the other day and says, well, we're no longer under the law anymore. I said, well, he came to fulfill the law. He's like, no, he didn't. I'm like, look at the scripture. 
It came to fulfill. <laughs> yes, you're not, but understand the bigger picture. That's what the scripture says. But we come out of ignorance. Again, I'm, I, this was not in my notes to hit this way today, but it got to be for somebody. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to tell you this, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll go to the 19th verse. Someone once told me, they said that if, uh, if I gave you chicken and called it uh, a different type of steak and you've never had it, you would say, this is what it is. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> if you've never experienced something and I tell you what it is, <laughs> then guess what? You'll say this is what it is. Yeah. And that's what's happening. A lot of times in our conversations, we're listening to false prophets. And when I say false prophets, that person doesn't necessarily have to be a, a prophet, if you will, but it is the untruth. But if you don't know the truth for yourself, those negative seeds are then planted. That's why you have to be careful even the stuff you watch online. Because some of it isn't true. <laughs> Right? We call ourselves looking at some of the spiritual things, and you know, I'm looking at this, and that, and it's untrue. This walk, even as it relates to believers, you yourself have got to dig for yourself. You can't rely on anyone else. You got to get into the word for yourself. So, 19 verse then says, "For what can be known about God is plain to them." In other words, he's not hidden. He's not hiding from you. If, you. if you want to be filled, he will fill you. If you want more of him, he will give you more of him. So in other words, it's in plain view. He ain't hiding. <laughs> but because God has shown it to them. So the scripture here tells me that if you desire more of him, what, 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 if you desire more of him, you'll have more of him. This is Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. There has to be a joining. This is where we see the unity again. See the oneness. It is, again, not God's desire that we be separated, but it is his desire that we come into reconciliation. So the 20th verse says, for the invisible attributes namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. Clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they were without excuse. So in other words, he's saying, listen, you don't have no reason to say, hey, I didn't get, because I was right here the whole time. <laughs> and that's oftentimes what we see here in the church, in the body of Christ. Because God makes himself available. We come in, there's an opportunity for you to get it right. Maybe you're not baptized. Maybe you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. The spirit is moving. And again, it doesn't have to be here. You can get filled at home. Amen. Amen. You can get filled in, in, your, in your prayer time at home. So he's not reserved just to hear. He doesn't reveal himself just in this, in, beyond these four walls. <laughs> he can fill you in your car. Yeah. But are we um, desiring more of him so that he can meet us in those places? Because if God is omnipresent and he's everywhere... <laughs> That means wherever I'm seeking, he's, he's there. But we limit God to a building. We limit God to a place. And we've been talking about it week after week after week of being very careful about what you're doing even when you're not being seen. All throughout the, all throughout the world, we see it. Be separate. In other words, don't mingle Come into alignment. But the thing I want to talk about, uh, and, 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 uh, without excuse, so we understand that, right? Let's be, amen? amen? We understand we'll have no excuses. 
All right, let's get back to um, Ephesians 20. We're going to jump back into the fourth chapter, uh, 20 verse. But this is not the way you learn Christ. He's saying, listen, this is not <laughs> everything that we taught, everything that I talked about up these verses here, this is not it. <laughs> we, this was nowhere in the script. <laughs> 21st verse says, assuming that you have heard about him and you were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. 22, put off the old self, which belongs to the former. So in other words, so we already dealt with the ignorance. Now Paul is saying, okay, now that you know, Put off who you were. A life, uh, a, a former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. We talked about deceitful desires. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So here it is again. He's talking to uh, uh, Ephesus. And we already talked about it in Romans. So this is a common theme. <laughs> This is, this, is a, this is a common thing. Listen, if you, if you want this thing, you have to be renewed by your mind. It's amazing that he talks about the mind so much. And Paul, even a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, that even as he's writing, he's writing from prison. So even as he's writing from prison, and I said it at the beginning of our study here, but every time I begin to think about that, I say, wow, he's really writing from the place of being a, a, a captive, if you will. The how renewed does your mind have to be <laughs> to tell someone to be strong as you're in prison? I mean, really think about that. <laughs> because we're reading it, not understanding how he's writing. <laughs> And a lot of times, uh, we're in our certain situations. And we are unwilling to lend an encouraging word to someone else within the body because of what we're going through. I'm going through something right now. I, I can't encourage nobody. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I got too much going on with me right now. Paul is literally in jail. <laughs> Could that mean that we as believers are always called no matter what our circumstance is? No matter how we feel? No matter what's going on in my life? I'm still supposed to uplift? I mean, that's it's easy to say when you ain't got nothing going on. <laughs> but it's another thing to put in the application. Remember, that's what Paul is talking about, chapters 4, 5, and 6. He's saying application is everything. There's a lot of people who uh, can tell you how to drive a car. But when I give you, give you some pieces and tell you put a car together, that's a whole other animal. <laughs> and can we spend so much time with the word that our lives start to align and we can start to put the pieces where they're supposed to be? Because one thing to read it, and read it and understand it. But it's another thing to then walk it out. And it does not mean you get it overnight. It literally doesn't mean you get it overnight. The truth is, you got to keep doing it until he calls you home. <laughs> it's a daily walk. Because just when you think you got it is when the enemy slips in. <laughs> Isn't that just when, it, just when you think, okay, I've got it. The enemy slips right in. I told you that. So it's been almost 10 years since I've been to casino. And Sunday I sat right up here and told you, the enemy still talk. I said, I, I was talking to um, my wife the other day. And I was saying, isn't it amazing that the enemy just never stops? He, he's persistent. He never stops. 
So just when you think you've overcome some things, that I'm walking with Christ, I've gotten over this hurdle, that same thing tries to pull you, pull you back. But could it be that we've introduced ourselves to some things that we never should have in the first place? Amen. But that's the ignorance. I'm, I'm coming full circle here because I want you to get it. That God really is not his desire for us to experience some things. Even when you look at, um, at Genesis, and we see how he really created man to live. I mean, really look at just the, the story of creation, and we'll probably go through it in the next couple weeks. Uh, but when you really look at how he created man to live, he, he created the perfect world. <laughs> I mean, perfect when you think about it. <laughs> Adam, this is yours. This land, name the animals. Listen, I give you a job. You can live. Just live. Sin is then introduced, and now they know they're naked. Who told you you were naked? Who, who told you? I, I didn't have this for you. <laughs> and that's what I mean. There's some things that God did not design for you. That, uh uh-uh, don't touch that. But we touch it anyway. Now we have to then deal with the consequence of it. But it does not mean you're not victorious and you can't overcome it. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Really, let me be careful how I say this, because they're all important, every single one of them. But it's something about self-control, that when you pair them up with the other fruit, because <laughs> I'll love you if I have more self-control, <laughs> because you'll say, mm, that's not right. The Spirit told me not to say that. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> I'm going to choose love. Self-control is something, that, and, and, thank you, Holy Ghost, it's Look at the word itself, control. Who are you going to let control? The spirit or self? The self has to then give over to the spirit. That's really what he means about self-control. Not, not my will, not my way, but thy way. Whatever it is you want, Lord, is what I want. Whatever it is, whatever it is you want. And what we have to understand is, Everything that God, uh, Sister Tiffany, everything that's for you is not necessarily for Sister LaShawn. Everything for Sister LaShawn is not necessarily for Sister LaSharice. And that is really one of the things that when we really get into uh, Ephesians where he's talking about uh, the unity of the body, everybody is still uniquely different. Some apostles, preachers, everybody has their own role. But oftentimes, Sister Ashley, I want you to look like Sister So-and-so. Or Sister So-and-so, I want you to look like, like this one. Take a number and sit down. And everybody look the same. But that's not how God designed us. He designed us to be holy. He designed us to walk after the Spirit to have what it is he has for us, but still uniquely be yourself. And that's the interesting part, because oftentimes we think that when I come into the knowing of Christ, then I have to be like you. So if you can sing and do riff, 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 I got to be able to sing and do riff, riff, riff. Well, maybe your thing ain't singing. <laughs> but that's what makes the body the body. Because if I have 16 arms... I now look like a monster. Well, where's my leg? God is the head. The problem is, a lot of times, we want to then copy-paste. We want to copy-paste. This is not a copy-paste thing. If, if that was the case, then we would all look the same. We would all sound the same. But why is it that we all have a unique fingerprint? 
Why did God design it? See, because we, we say this wasn't even my way to go tonight, but I'm, we're going to go there. When we look at even how uniquely made we are, God chose that for you. He chose that for you. So every flaw that you have, he chose it for you. And I would argue that it's not really a flaw. Because anything that God does, he does well. So even uh, when we see it, there has to be a renewing of the mind because the way you see it has got to change. Well, Lord, why don't I look like so-and-so? And why don't I sing like this one? And why don't I just... And me? People of God, the problem is you haven't spent enough time with him to say, Lord, what is it you have for me? And my fear is that a lot of us believers, folks who come into, into the knowing of who God is, we're leaving here saved, filled, but you're leaving so much more here because I'm saved and I'm just waiting for him to come get me. Do, do we get saved at 22 years old, 30 years old, and just say, now I'm saved with no work? Now, now I'm saved and that there's, no, there's no walking, there's no action to say, Lord, what is it you have for me? There has to be action. There has to be a, 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 a moving of a, a, essentially a, uh, walking is a verb. There has to be some movement. Yes, you're saved. Heaven's going to be your home if you continue to live right. <laughs> but if I stay within these four walls and I don't uh, preach or share the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, what good is me, of, of him saving me? If I'm ashamed of him, what good is it? And he wants you to prosper and be in good health. But again, it goes right back around to, the scripture talks about it, the ignorance and the unknowing. So a lot of times, we could fix a lot of these things and these issues that we have if we would just dig a little deeper into God's word. So uh, I, I want us to uh, uh, speed, uh, speed up a little bit more and go into uh, verse 26. <clears throat> Ephesians 4 and 26, we're going to just drop down. He says, you can be angry, but don't sin. And the semicolon says, okay, listen, I want you to really pay attention to what's coming right now. He says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. So in other words, we sit and sometimes we sit in a place too long. Some of the stuff that we've exposed ourselves to, and we shouldn't have been there, and we, you know, and y'all know, we stay in that place too long because then we start to accept it. Well, I just got an anger problem. Accept it. That's the way God made me. No, he, <laughs> no. Self-control. Some things only come by fasting and praying. Right? When you feel that, go, well, I got to fast some more. <laughs> Maybe one day a week ain't enough. <laughs> Two days a week ain't enough. I might go a week-long fast, get more of his word. And what you'll start to see is you start to hear more of him. You start to, you start to hear more of him. And you're not, thank you, Holy Ghost, you're not just fasting to say I'm not eating. It's not a diet. Because <laughs> sometimes we're just not eating, but we're still not meditating on his word. You're, you're, you're not eating, but... You essentially just, it's no different than you not eating for that day, <laughs> which sometimes we do, right? You know, you can get the ripping and running, and you, I didn't have anything to eat today, but that's not the same as a fast. A fast is when you intentionally put your mind, listen, Lord, I need to hear your voice. There's, there's more that I, I need, this day has been Set aside for you. I don't even want to do too much talking to folks today. <laughs> I, I need to hear more of your voice. But that is how you combat things like this. 
Lord, why is it that I'm, why is it I'm always angry? Why is it that I'm always feeling like this? And I promise you, when you really go to God's word, you'd be like, Lord, I didn't know I was going to end up here today, but this is just what I needed. Because he will reveal himself to you. You can't ask for more of God and he not show you more than in his word. Verse 27. So verse 27 says, and give no opportunity to the devil. This is English Standard Version. Give no opportunity to the devil. I want to say that again. Give no opportunity. Give alone. You can stop right there. <laughs> Which means you have all power. Which means he can't take the opportunity. You give it to him. <laughs> give no opportunity to the devil. My father shared something with me uh, when I was 14 years old, and I've been meditating on this a lot lately. And it's amazing how some of the lessons that we get, uh, even some of the folks who've gone on home, they kind of come back and hit you a little different later on. <laughs> I'm sure we've all experienced them. But there was one particular time um, I was playing the piano in a rehearsal, and uh, they said, Brother Melvin, can you lead us out in prayer? And I was like, absolutely not. I'm not praying in front of all y'all. <laughs> I'll never forget it. And uh, he sit in the back, and he pulls me up afterwards and says, never forfeit an opportunity that God gave you. Amen. Now, I've never forgotten that thing. There's some things that God wants to, you only to have. But then we forfeit those opportunities and give them up to the devil. In my situation, for the example I just gave, it, he wanted me to keep my mouth solid. <laughs> my, my prayer could have helped someone in the room. But I said, uh-uh, <laughs> I'm giving this up. I don't want the opportunity. Call somebody else to do it. I was chosen for that. Someone, it, God laid it on whomever's heart to say, hey, you're going to lead the prayer. And I gave up the opportunity. How many opportunities are we giving up? How many opportunities are we giving up because of our insecurities? Because of the labels that we've accepted? There's some things that God just does not want for us. But then we not, thank you, Holy Ghost, ignorance, again, <laughs> I've never given up another opportunity ever since then like that. The enemy came through another way. <laughs> I've never given up another opportunity. Whenever someone has said, hey, would you step up? Would you pray? Would you do something? I said, sure. Listen, I'm not going to give it up. <laughs> the enemy just comes in through the side door. I said, I didn't see you coming in this way. But that's how crafty he is. So e even as we as one body, these are things that we have to understand just individually because when you understand it, we start to unite. I start to understand the importance of loving. I start to understand the importance of if you're going through, I'll, I'll step up. You don't have a ride, I'll give you one. You, you, what do you, you need prayer? Certainly, no. I'll put what I want on the side and I'll pray for you. The importance of uniting. And I didn't even get through my message the said the study here is all that I had. Because I really wanted to go into some more of what it means to be united, but this is the way God took us today. Being united, but also understanding what you have to do before you can unite. <laughs> There's something you have to do. I can't just come to God and still want to carry all my baggage with me, too. He ain't going to, ain't going to accept that. I can't say, Lord, I'm going to give up one, two, and three, but I certainly can't give up four. <laughs> but <laughs> you've got to lay it all down. But will I trust God enough 
to understand that if I can be completely vulnerable and intimate with him, he'll take care of everything else for me. That's really what it is. Can you really come into the knowing of saying, look, Lord, I'm going to choose you. I'm going to help my sister. I'm going to help my brother. Whatever I can do to uplift your kingdom. In fact, he says when you pray, he says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. (laughs) Right? It's all about him and fulfilling that which he has for you, which then help us all to grow together. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. But I want us to understand the importance of why we do what we do. We can't just come in and say, I'm doing it just to do it. But you do it for a reason. Don't, let us not walk around in ignorance. A lot of the things we... Uh, a lot of the, the issues that we have, when I say issues, just society in itself, it's out of ignorance. It, it really boils down to, you just don't know. But if I showed you the consequence or that which is on the other side of what you're doing, you probably most likely wouldn't do it. And God's word is full of it. Just alone, when you look at the story of creation, to why Jesus came. Why would we ever want to crucify him again? But it's about trusting him. God's way is true. Maybe there's someone, maybe there's someone in the sound of my voice who just wants prayer. Someone in the sound of my voice who says, I'm having a struggle with anger. I'm having a struggle with flesh. I'm having a struggle with whatever that thing is. He came that you might have life and you may have it more abundantly. It is not his desire for you to stay where you are. It is not God's desire for you to live and to be defeated. It is not his desire for you to think that because I'm in the state that I'm in, I have to stay here. But he wants you to be strong. He wants you to be strong. Can we sing this, lift this up together? I will be with you. One more time, I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. If you trust, if you would only trust, that I am. Be with. 
Via Fio. If you would only trust. I am. That I am. If you would only trust Trust. Trust me. Maybe there's one that just wants to join the ministry. We'll open the doors up to the church. Maybe there's one that says, you know what, I like this church. Someone the other day stopped me and said, I've never been to a church that I felt so much love. I said, I know that's right. <laughs> Worship, praise, and love. 
We're not the only church on our way to heaven, but we're just one of them. Put those hands together. <laughs> Giving. Uh, there was an announcement that went out today that said that we will no longer be using Cash App. No longer using Cash App. So if you're giving with Cash App, we've made another way for you to give uh, through Zelle. You can now give through Zelle. Uh, so if you give through Cash App, it will be returned back to you. In fact, in a week, you will not be able to even find TCH Baltimore. Uh, this is, these are some things that we're doing. This allows us to, to uh, better serve you even at the end of the year. It's much easier using some of these other, other mediums uh, um, in the way for us to stay connected with you. Uh, con also, connect. Maybe there's someone here or even online that just wants to connect with the ministry. Need prayer. You want to become a member. Anything that you need to say, you know what, I, I just want to reach out and be a part. You can just text. Connect. 443-222. The rest of it is going to be up on the screen in just a minute. <laughs> zero, zero, nine, three. That's it. <laughs> four, four, three, two, 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 zero, zero, nine, three. Look at somebody say, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. See. See, thanks. Sometimes we say it. And we just sing it. But it's, see, I'm jumping a little ahead of myself. But don't y'all know in heaven, the only thing we're going to do is be praising and singing. Singing. So when we say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, open your mouth and give God what he deserves. This next time is not just for me, but it's for you. Sing it to your neighbor and sing it unto God. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for He is good. For He's worthy. He's worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. Yes, He is good. Yes, He's worthy. To the Lord. For he's good. Yes, he's good. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord. For he's good. Yes, he's good. For he's worthy. Worthy. For he's good. Yes, he's good. For he's worthy. Worthy. worthy, for he is good. Father, right now we thank you for your word, for your word is true and you cannot lie. Father, for that reason, we'll believe everything that your word says about us. For we know, oh God, that you've called us to be victorious. Father, you've called us to love. You've called us to be united, not only with our neighbor, oh God, but with you. Father, help us to come out from the world and be separate. And, oh, God, it is my prayer, oh, God, that the, prayer, the peace of God would rest on us, that the blessings of the Lord would fall on us, and that the very same God would bless the works of our hand. And all of the people of God said, amen and amen. Go in peace.